Hello! Today I'm going to show you all how I approach digital coloring and shading. I'm going to be using Metabang Paint Pro, which is a free program, but even if you don't want to download it, this technique should work in any program with layers. As a disclaimer, this tutorial is based more on tools than on theory. I'm going to assume that you already have a basic grasp on the principles of shading, at least in theory if not necessarily in practice. All that said, let's begin! So here we have a line art I prepared for this tutorial. You'll want to make sure your line art is on its own transparent layer so that we can color underneath it. Now that we have a line art layer, we need to prepare a color layer. To do this, first make sure there are no holes in the line art. Then take the magic wand tool, set its expansion to about 2 pixels, and select the outside of your line art. The expansion will make it so that your selection stays just inside your line art rather than leaking slightly out. Now inverse your selection so that it's on the inside of your drawing instead of on the outside. Sounds a bit counterintuitive, but starting on the outside and inversing is actually a lot faster and cleaner than trying to select from the inside, as the inside has a lot more details and closed off spaces that you'd have to add one by one. Now make a blank layer underneath your line art layer. This will be your color layer. Take a neutral color, usually gray, and fill in your entire selection. Deselect and lock the transparency. Now you have a base on which to color without going outside the lines. Color freely on this layer. Once you are done coloring the base, it's time to color the line art. Lock the transparency of the line art layer. Now you'll be able to change the line art's colors without changing the lines themselves. Use the eyedropper tool to select a color from the base. Make it darker and use that for the lines. I tend to messily apply all the colors first, and then go back and refine it where each color goes. I leave the eyes and pupils pure black to help them pop. Outside of that though, I try to make sure every line has at least some color, even when they go to very dark patches like this fella's ear. It's almost imperceptible in a flat color, but can make a difference in fully shaded pieces once you start adding effects. Once you are done coloring the line art, it is safe to merge your line art and color layers. This is now your character base layer, and it's time to start shading. Create a blank layer above your base layer and set it to clipping mask. This means that this layer will only cover the same pixels occupied by the layer it's clipped to, in this case, your base. Set the clipping layer to multiply and fill the whole thing with a medium dark color. I tend to use pinks or purples, but feel free to experiment. Create another clipping mask under this one and fill it with white. This will help you drop or pick colors during the next step. Hide the white layer until you need it. Go back to your multiply layer. Now it's time to start adding light. Select a slightly later shade than the one that you filled it with and start blocking out light. I like to do it this way, starting with a big shadow and gradually layering light rather than starting flat and gradually layering shadows because it helps me focus on where the light is actually hitting the character. Continue doing this with lighter and lighter shades until you reach white. Make sure that you are using a brush with pressure sensitive opacity. Once you have everything blocked out, it's time to start smoothing and refining. Switch your white layer on and off to get the colors you need. This is the most time consuming part of the process, so be patient. For particularly dark colors, the multiply layer won't make much of a difference. If you have any spots like these in your art, you will have to make an additional layer on top, set to normal, and add those highlights manually. Keep smoothing and refining until you are happy with how it looks. Once you are, you can go ahead and delete your white layer as you will no longer need it. You can also go ahead and merge your multiply layer down to your base if you want, or you can leave it until later. But make sure you're happy with it before merging, because once you do, it'll be a lot harder to make adjustments. We're not quite done yet, though. Create another layer on top of your base and shading layers. It doesn't matter much whether or not it's clipped to the base. Start lining parts of the line art with a much lighter color. This gives a bit of a pseudo bounce lighting effect and makes everything look crisper. Go ahead and add some highlights in the eyes, too. At this point, if you want, you could be done. But I like to add a little more color contrast between light spots and shadow spots. To do this, I'm going to make two new clipping layers, one set to multiply and one set to overlay. On my multiply, I'm going to add some cool blues or purples, while on my overlay, I'm going to use very pale yellows. 
Exactly where I put these colors will depend on the piece and its light source. Since this example has no environment, I'll just do it a bit generically. Gaussian blur the heck out of those two layers, and boom! So there you have it. That's how I approach coloring and shading in Metabang. Naturally, this is not the only way to handle it, it's just what I've developed in my own work. Hopefully this can be of use to some of you. Happy drawing!